Hello and welcome to another tasty tutorial. Today I'll be talking to you about Blender Kit. Probably heard about web pages like Turbo Squid, CG Trader, Polyhaven, but I seldom hear people mentioning Blender Kit. So I thought I would show you how to upload your models and textures to Blender Kit. And if you're lucky enough, you might even make some extra money on the side. Now, before we start with the video, I strongly suggest you create a Blender Kit profile for yourself and you also download the Blender Kit add-on by searching Blender Kit add-on on Google and then following these precise instructions to install your add-on. So let's get into the video. I'm working currently in Blender 3.4. This is a custom project of mine, a startup file that I have for lighting situations like product photography, that sort of stuff. And I also use it to light and generate thumbnails for my Blender Kit materials and objects. In a future video, this is also going to be available for free. So you'll be able to download it and get it for yourself and have the best possible option of getting your materials and models seen on Blender Kit. Now let's take a short and quick look through what the add-on looks like. So you have the See My Uploads, Blender Kit Profile, Blender Kit Login, and then you have Find and Upload Assets. A video about searching assets and how to use these assets, I think other people have explained it very nicely. So we are just gonna work with Upload. So this is how the upload looks when you have nothing in your scene, like no object. But in my case, I'm gonna try and upload a new object, a new thing that I have created. So I have uploaded one of the models that I've created a while back. This is a onion. You might be familiar with it from one of my previous tutorial where I was explaining how to make these super nice stylized wooden objects. This is not gonna work for Blender Kit. So it's very important for Blender Kit. You need to have things in scale. That's the first thing you want to make sure. I'm going to go into front view by pressing one on the numpad and I want to scale it down to where it fits my area right here. This project was also made in order to accommodate the right dimensions. Then I'm going to press T and on the side I have this measure, measure it. This is like the distance measure. I'm going to choose that and then I'm going to start and kind of measure how big my onion is. You can see my onion is 70 centimeters big and that's not going to work. So right now we have to correct the size of that. So how do we correct that? The actual size of the onion, I think it's like what, about six centimeters. So it needs to be that big. Right now I'm going to position it there, scale it down so it's kind of the right size and then selection to cursor and move it back to the origin point. This is where we get to the next issue. This is extremely important, the origin point. Basically, a lot of my models were returned because the origin points were not correct. So what do we need to do? You need to think how your model is going to lay down if it falls flat on the floor. In my case, I'm just going to pull it up so it's right there. And I presume my onion would fall like this, but maybe because it's a bit more bottom heavy, it should maybe fall something like this, right? Somewhere around here. Now we need to move this yellow dot, the origin point down here. So I just kind of mash it there, make it touch the red line like so, and just moving it into position. And then you need to press control A and reset the location. And lastly, we also need to adjust the scale. So control A and adjust the scale of your model. So it's actually applying those measurements right there, because otherwise they would just jump into their original form. You can check this by using Alt R or Alt G. So if I press Alt R, and I haven't adopted the rotation, it's going to rotate again. So we need to readapt the location, readapt the rotation. Location is correct. So everything is working fine. Alt S, you see my object returned back. So we want to make sure that the rotation, location and scale are applied. And this is now a perfectly fine object for this. So now we can start uploading our model. As you see here, you have read model upload instructions, which is very helpful for getting instructions on how to upload your models. But we're just going to run through these settings right now. Upload model, which is the button you press at the end of everything. You have categories here. For some reason, now it's not showing me the categories, but these can also be corrected later on. You have private and public, which means your asset is going to be either publicly or privately viewable or downloadable. You have license, royalty free or creative commons. I just usually leave it at royalty free. And you have full and free selection here, which means free. Everyone can download it. 
and full only the people that have the blender kit membership or blender membership can download it now it's time to fulfill your item so for the name and description and tags i strongly suggest you really take your time and you write a good optimized description and title so i want to go with a wooden onion model for example and in the description i want to describe it as much as possible so i want to say that this is a model that it's wooden that it's meant to be in the stylized it's meant to be a decoration try and repeat a lot of buzzwords like interior decoration stuff like that so it's gonna index your models a bit better because it's actually a pretty decent search engine within blender kit with the tags, again, we want to be as broad and as encompassing as possible. So we're going to go like wood, onion, vegetable, decoration, interior, etc. Now for the thumbnail, you can generate the thumbnail automatically within Blender, but I don't suggest that a lot of the times I kind of had some issues if it wasn't like for materials and stuff like that. So I would strongly suggest you don't really touch that and make your own thumbnail. But we're just going to run through these remaining settings. So we have style, realistic, painterly, low poly. I'm going to leave it at the realistic because my model looks kind of like that. Then we're going to choose the production. So is it finished or is it not finished? So production level finished template not finished we can then also do a condition new in this case we can say new pbr compatible so this means that you have unwrapped your model successfully and can be wrapped or used with pbr textures yes definitely and then we have manufacturer designer designer collection invariant i usually leave the design collection invariant empty but the manufacturer and designer this is something you really need to go for in this case the manufacturer and designer it's both me if i'm making models that are from somewhere else i would usually then write i don't know the manufacturer or designer is this in this company or this in this company slash me use design year if you want to make things that are updated and work hours how long it took you to make this i'm gonna say approximately one hour let me go into my camera so now you can see our little onion boy is not really very visible so i'm just gonna for now increase the scale and position our little onion boy in the center of this camera so i'm trying now to make a good thumbnail for my object when i go into rendered view this is what it looks like so this is how i use my project for lighting these scenes i'm just gonna find a good stable nice frame in which i can position my model i can also go through different sets of lights so everything is nice and clear so you can see it kind of emphasized from different spots this project also has a compositor node that also finishes off with a nice sharpen and contrast and brightness node so you have really good results when viewing in the end when i'm kind of happy with what i have here i'm just going to center it a bit better make it a bit better here so i'm just trying to really make it pop in the middle of the screen make it as large as possible so that it's not blocking i really suggest that so it's nice and visible and when i'm happy with it i'm just going to press render it's going to render it out and while it's rendering our little onion right here i want to suggest that you save it in a location so whenever you create models you also save the thumbnails with them and then you just super easily find your thumbnail and assign it in your project and there we go our little onion boy is done i suggest you do these at the highest possible resolution you can for your machine so you have a really crisp and nice result so i'm just going to save this bad boy and after i'm done saving everything it's time to upload my thumbnail and with my thumbnail uploaded with my positions and everything reset let's just do a final check so i want to go alt s alt r alt g we have it in the center of the screen the dimensions are kind of correct we have a nice model on our hands the thumbnail is done the description the tags and the name are okay we have the manufacturer designer everything tick the last thing is going to be just save the category a bit differently so we are just now going to upload the model you can also notice that before your project is uploaded it says please test your upload after it finishes open a new file find the asset and check if it snaps correctly to surfaces if it has all the textures and renders as expected and if it has the correct size in world units and this is for the models i'm just going to press ok and this little guy is now gonna be uploaded
The process is completely automatic. Blender does everything for you. And we can now already jump and see if it's being uploaded to Blender Kit. As you can see, it's already being uploaded to Blender Kit. We see the uploading status right here. And as it's uploading, we can take a closer look at Blender Kit. So this is how it looks like when you go under my assets. You can see that I have a bunch of these. You have all of the possible filters here. So model, material, HDR, brush, scene. These are all of the things you can upload. And these are all of the statuses. So uploading, it's pretty self-explanatory. Upload it as well. So it has been completely upload it on hold means that a slight problem was found with your model so the only thing you need to do is read the comment and go and correct exactly that thing in your project and then re-upload it again rejected just means that it's outright rejected and validated means that it's accepted and it's currently being sold on blender kit then you can check your earnings scores and free downloads and stuff like that we can just take a look at earnings and score so earnings, this is how much some of your materials and some of your models have made in the past 30 days. And then you have score, which is actually a very interesting concept that Blender applied here. So it's score is the average quality times the complexity times 10. And if somebody uses your asset, you will get earnings proportional to your asset score, meaning the better your model is, the more money you'll make, which is absolutely great. It's absolutely amazing that they have done this and it actually helps create better models. This is, for example, how it looks like when you click on one of your assets. So right now the score is 540. You have an average quality of 9 out of 10 and a complexity of 6. You have all of the information of your model on the left. You have your name, your description, category, which you can change, and then gym, steel, fitness, tags, all of this stuff. You can change the thumbnail after the fact, and then you have all of the other things that could be fulfillable in Blender Kit, but you can also do it on Blender Kit's website. Now let's check if our uploaded model is ready to go. Yes, we can see our little onion body right here. Wooden onion model, 4th of February, uploaded and awaiting validation. Now, as I said before, we can click on our little onion and category and correct the category. So it's not going to be architecture. Maybe we can do decoration. Maybe I'm going to go with sculpture, let's say. And then we just save the changes and that's it. So also if you find that, oh, I forgot some tags or something, you can just return back and change that. So yeah, that's going to be basically it. Hopefully you've learned a bit on how to upload your models to Blender Kit. So now if you have any projects where you have like leftover objects, materials and assets, you can upload them to Blender Kit. This free resource file is going to be available very soon. So you can also use this lighting resource file to light your own thumbnails, make it way easier for you to be discoverable. And in the next tutorial, we'll take a look at how to set up your textures upload, which is also a super fun process. Okay, I'll see you in the next one and have a good one.